Uh, hello. And hello. Tom. Hello. Hello. Am I am I back? Am I really really back on the podcast? Slaps him on the face. He's real all right. After oh, yeah. avoiding it. Yeah. After uh, traveling to do it to a different country to avoid doing it. Uh, still got me. Being an international fugitive running, running from the Tim <laughs> Tom podcast. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, I believe, uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that uh, we are joined here today by uh, the lovely guest. Uh, he came in and uh, saved the podcast once before uh, when it came to the a little pump special. Oh, sorry. Oh little- yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lillian Pumpernickel. He's back. Hell he's yeah. back. Not not Lillian Pumpernickel, but uh, Charlie. He's back. No, he is very much gone. Yeah, Lillian Pumpernickel. Lillian Pumpernickel. Yeah. Uh, dipped. Gone. Oof. Fall Bye. Rip. Bye. Um. Okay. So this is another one of the. What's the series called, Tom? Shit, I'm, we're gonna have to edit this out. <laughs> 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 Greatest records. Okay, and uh, this is this is the next, the second instalment of Greatest Records, um, which Tom uh, started on his of his own on his own when I was indisposed. I, I wasn't I was unreachable at the time, uh, running from the Tim Tom podcast in Interpol, and um, well now we're back with the second installment and uh we're gonna interview charlie uh about his favorite album or one of his greatest records to him so charlie what 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 is this record would you mind giving it a little intro the record that i have chosen is the debut album of the band frank carter and the rattlesnakes spearheaded by one frank carter came out in 2015 and it is called blossom it is a uh, a kind of British punk album mm-hmm. that's uh, very popular around South London and uh, especially around in South Kent and areas like that where we come from. Um, yeah. They're not really that well known up north. They're mainly like they're similar to Slaves. They're a very yeah. kind of southern uh, band, but uh, still, it's a fucking banger of a punk album. If you like, yeah, it, stuff. it goes hard. And it seems like a little bit. I mean, Frank Carter has got like six albums under his belt with various different out, al- like two different, three different bands, uh, Gallows, Pure Love, and the Rattlesnakes. And it seems like, well, you know, he knows he he loves his punk. Uh, Been around the block he, a few times. Precisely, so and like he describes his sound like with. Um, with this band as being some kind of a, like, I believe he says it's like pouring everything together, all the genres that they like, into a melting pot that is real and new. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I like his mindset to do with punk. Like on his Wikipedia page, it's got that too. So he says, well, punk is a mindset. You either have it or you don't. And uh, it appears that he most certainly does have it. He, Not he only definitely from... has it. I, I can yeah. attest that from seeing him live, he definitely has it. Um, yeah. Yeah, because his more recent albums with the Rattlesnakes have been a bit more of a um, a mix-up of genres mm. comparatively to Blossom. Blossom is more of just a straight punk album. And I feel because of that, as much as I love the other two albums, it's a bit more cohesive than the other two as... Um, they experiment quite a bit on the other two albums comparatively um but yeah it uh it went i believe it went number 18 on the uk charts as well yeah, as it was released cool, Blossom, yeah uh, when it was first released i don't know whether that was specifically like the the rock charts or anything or yeah. whether that was just the general charts but it just says here the peak position was 18 there when 81 in australia um as well for some reason i didn't know he had an australian audience um kent but yeah, and australia they're his main demographics kent and the fucking aussies 
Um, Only um, one part of Canberra, the whole of Australia love him. Yeah. Only one part of the UK. That's cool. Um, I think you picked a pretty good time to do this album, actually, given that there is a deluxe version coming yeah. out next month. It was uh, very recently, it was the five year anniversary of its religion, original release. So they are doing a deluxe reprint of the um, deluxe vinyls, yeah. um, which are all sold out now, but I managed to uh, cop one, I think, when they originally announced them back in July, I think they announced them. Mm. But, um, Oh yeah, that they're coming out in uh, in about a month. So, um, but yeah, so it's a very good time to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Charlie, why is it your favorite album? Your well, greatest album. <laughs> I chose this as my favorite album, as as I'd mentioned previously, I feel this album's a lot more cohesive than his other two albums with uh, the Rattlesnakes. Um, it is like just nuts to butts energy shit from front to back. Mm. You know, it it never really stops the entire album. I think apart from it slows down a little bit when it comes to Lost and Beautiful Death, and then it picks back up again with uh, Rotten Blossom and Primary Explosive uh, about two thirds of the way through. Mm. Uh, it has a good mix as well. It has a good mix of uh, the different kind of songs you want as well, especially if you're a punk fan like me. There's a lot of different um, uh, kind of. I guess I guess the best way to describe it is there's a lot of different kind of energies with each of the yeah. songs. Yeah. I found as well that along with them fitting together really really well, each song is also very very unique in its own right if you've listened mm. to the album before you'll be able to hear one of the songs and re- immediately recognize it normally from mm. the first couple of seconds and yeah there's lots of many there's many different reasons why i love this album that yeah. i'm sure we'll get into over the yeah. uh next 20 30 minutes or so yeah. but that's a, a, a nice breakdown of why i feel like this yeah. one was the one that I picked over some of the other albums that I feel are some of my top albums. Mm. Um, I think, uh, so you're saying about uh, his punk mindset, and uh, I think one of the things that can be more punk is to like release it on your own label and produce it yourselves. Yeah. There's only one external like member of personnel uh, who isn't in the band, and... Uh, they did they did the mastering on it but uh all the rest of them uh thomas michener for instance he's the bassist he like he helped out with the production some of the sound engineering and the mixing like they they, they all just produced it recorded it and released it themselves they just all that's, do it, yeah that's very very cool yeah and also because of that there isn't uh um there's almost no creative dilution as well when it comes yeah. to their music. You don't have lots of different people kind of reaching into um, and influencing each mm. song. Because I found that with a lot of other bands, you get so many different third parties influencing. Mm. Like Even if it's only tiny little bits in their song, it still builds up and has a has an effect on the the final product having all of these kind of all of these people having different influences over it so i find that their their songs are very very real to the kind of vision that they're going for yeah which i respect massively especially since as you mentioned they all produce it master it uh release it on their own label um everything like that it's all completely independent as well but yeah very cool it's very punk um what you you said something about or you were going to talk about the the live performances and yeah before we started you were talking about some of them you said that uh, they've they've performed at reading like every, for the past decade every single year at reading and leeds yes they have yeah um it would it would have been 12 years in a row if Rona didn't shut down this year's Reading because mm. they were due to go on main stage as well this year. 
Whoa. But, uh, yeah, yeah, they would, went would on. Would that have been their main stage debut? Uh, no, their main stage debut was actually back in 2019. They had spent most of the other times just performing in the smaller stages, like the pits and everything around. Mm -hmm. The main stage debut was in 2019, which I sadly missed because I didn't go to uh, Reading in 2019. Mm. But what was it like on some of the smaller stages? The smaller stages, uh, well, I think as I mentioned to you earlier, it was just completely unmatched. The yeah. uh, the kind of energy and the the just the the receptiveness of the crowd, and just them all being down to do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> um, there was one of the smaller stages that I saw him on, which I think is the Festival Republic stage. I mean, you two been to Reading, you know the Festival Republic stage is over down. Um, it's one of the yeah. small ones next to the pit, I think. I don't think I watched a single act there. I, I um, did. It's a nice stage. I but watched, a couple of I watched um, Black Honey, Amazons, and Frank Carter there, I think, one year. The whole crowd had turned up there because it was a completely secret set. They had only announced it an hour before uh, <laughs> turning up and performing. And um, Frank Carter persuaded or got the entire crowd to leave the tent completely. So the tent was then empty part way through a song because uh, everybody had left and gone into kind of the field area surrounding this tent. And when the song started, everybody ran into this tent and it was one of the most chaotic things I think I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> and it, you, you didn't even have to like, you didn't really have a choice either. If you, if you were there, you would just get dragged in by the crowd. Like there were people on the outside of the tent who were just kind of passing through that got dragged in with everyone like a tidal wave. They just got swept Whoa. into this fucking crowd of people. Um, they were then just like running around and crashing into each other on the inside of the stage. But um, their older shows that I've only seen clips of, I believe mm. are probably some of, some of the, uh, the best before, I think before about 2016, it may have even been before Blossoms actually came out when they were just going around um, performing singles off of the track, off of the, uh, mm. the album. They would allow their fans to come up onto the stage with them. He would say at the start of the, the, the show, oh, our stage is your stage. So all of the fans would come up onto the stage at some point and just join in, just oh, on, on stage cool. with them. You'd see fans like climbing up onto the drum set, like climbing onto the fucking um, the amps and the speaker set up on the uh, on the stage, and and yeah, just very very punk shit, you know. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm. And he is the the only person that I've ever seen who not only is able to walk across like crowd walk, but he does a handstand and crowd walks on his hands. Across, like, yeah, Jeez. he'll, he'll walk really across cool. the entire crowd on his hands with the mic in his mouth. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, that's nuts. That's yeah, and then he'd, he'd, he'd drop it, he'd drop it, and get somebody underneath him to hold it up to him, and he'll sing while doing a handstand on top of the crowd. So, that's awesome. yeah, just and the the music off the album fits very much into that kind of. Absolute chaotic, yeah. Absolute chaotic energy. Yeah. That I think the band kind of represents. So. So, so what are the what are the highlights for you on this album? It's a it's quite short, or the original version is at least just ten tracks. Mm, it's a bit short and sweet, but um. Well, no killer, I, no filler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe that. I kind of that, that's like what you want from a, a hardcore punk album. You don't want to drag it on too long, but, um, yeah. well, for me, my favourite one off of Blossoms has always been just the starting track, Juggernaut. Mm, so, that was my favourite as well. Yeah, it's my favourite too. To, um, I waited for years to hear that live, and then the last time that I saw Frank Carter live, he opened with it. Oh, that's great. Like, yeah, all of the, th the three times previously, that was the one song that I was always listening for, trying to, hoping that he was going to play it. And then yeah. he finally opened with it the fourth time that I saw him live. Wow. But, because um, Juggernaut was the one that I first originally heard off of Blossom. And just, it, it just opens up 
exactly how the rest of the album goes just mm. breakneck speed hitting oh, yeah. you right in the face yeah and um after that leading into one of my other favorite songs that i would put up there along with juggernaut trouble as well as i said the pace is kept up pretty much non-stop all the way until about track seven mm. uh six actually six it would be lost would be the first kind of uh slow down in the whole pacing of the album but i would think because the majority of the time when i listen to the album i just listen from juggernaut all the way down to paradise mm. you know if i'm feeling like uh you need some hype music just listen to the first five tracks back to back and uh there's just no other album that's kind of i wouldn't say because the 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 term i think of a lot of the time when we talk about punk is kind of like but it's not really violent it's not violent it's just kind of um and it's not really that angry either mm -hmm. find but as i said the the energy is unparalleled in those ones but in the first half of the album, the two standouts for me are Juggernaut and Trouble. And then as you move down later into the album, then what I would say are my favourites from the second half, so from 6 to 10, are mm. probably Primary Explosive and maybe a mix between either Beautiful Death or I Hate You, which mm. is their finishing track off of the album, which for a very long time was their most popular song of all time. Damn. It was only recently dethroned by Crowbar, which is the leading single of their most recent album, End of Suffering, which came out back in 2019. As well, came out independently under um, uh, International Death Cult. Yeah. Um, that closer is also the longest uh, track on the album, at 4 minutes 48 seconds. Yeah, comparatively to all of the others, which stick between 2 minutes 30 and 3 minutes 30. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a great closer as well, because it's not... It, it, it is more calm, but it still has the kind of same emotions and the same kind of... Um, I guess you'd say, yeah, emotional beats of a lot of the other songs, because a lot of the stuff that he sings mm. about throughout the album is uh, there's a lot of interpersonal struggles that he talks about on a lot of the separate songs especially in the calmer ones um or the the more somber songs such as loss and beautiful death uh, which are then all kind of wrapped up at the end in i Hel i hate you as kind of like a really good a really good conclusion mm. kind of wrapping up the whole kind of experience of the previous nine songs yeah with the 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 kind of mix of the kind of anger but also the kind of somber outlook of some of the other songs on there yeah. so i feel it is uh i hate you's a very very good finishing uh track mm -hmm as i said yeah wraps up the whole experience very very nicely at the end of it yeah wouldn't you also, uh, it's also one of the few occasions where i could actually understand every word he was saying <laughs> <laughs> no yeah if you're not a fan of uh growling punk vocals then uh this isn't really the album for you he does tone that down actually in his uh next two albums modern ruin is kind of like 50 50 because that's the second album modern ruins got a mix of um uh growling and screaming and then mm -hmm. half of it's also singing and then end of suffering which is their most recent one doesn't actually have a single scream in it so selling out yeah exactly he's selling out to them uh big uh i don't know big Big Sing. <laughs> big Sing, yeah, that's what I was trying to think. Big Sing inventing microphones to make mad amount of money. Um, uh, anyway, I mean, yeah, Tom. Like the fact that he, he does scream a lot, he's not just uh, growling and stuff. Uh, I, I I appreciate that, dude. Um, it's it's pretty damn cool. I mean, it's not like Stumbaid at all, it's not like Screamer, but it's, uh, it's, 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 just, it's punk, man. It's very, very, very 
Very cool. Um, what did you think? Do you kind of remember those first, how you felt when you first listened to this album? Uh, yeah, I do, actually, because I remember the first times I was introduced to Frank Carter, which was, I believe it was back in 2017. Yeah. Uh, probably early 2017, um, where I was starting to collect vinyls and mm. um, I went into just like a, a local shop, I think, and um, I found, it was literally just in the bargain bin, I <laughs> found the uh, uh, deluxe edition of their second album, Modern Ruin, and mm. uh, looking now, if you look on the website, I've got the, the indie exclusive LP um, with, as well, um, exclusive or, or more rare um cover art basically than the normal cover art so it's a normal cover art and then there's the one i have which right. is uh rarer than all of the others plus it is a uh, a sick vinyl which is white and red um but anyway i found this album and i think it was did they were doing like a three for 25 deal so i picked that up and i think i picked up an album from kasabian and hmm. something else i can't remember but i'd heard of them but I hadn't properly listened to them until I got this album. And just since then, they've become my favourite. Favorite it was just on a whim you picked it up. Fun. So you picked it up on a whim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I picked it up That's on a whim really cool, just because yeah. I, I recognised the name. And yeah. I needed I needed another album for the three for £25 deal. Oh, otherwise, so cool. I would have spent more money just buying the two. Yeah. So I was like, I recognised the name Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. I'd heard of them, and I think I'd maybe, I'd probably heard their music just kind of, but I'd never properly registered it as them. Yeah. Because I'd listened to a lot of stuff like Slaves and some Idols and stuff like that previously. So I probably mm -hmm. had had their music recommended to me. That's probably how I recognised the name. But yeah, I just picked it up off a whim uh, to fulfil the, the the deal. Took it home. And then for a long time, it was one of my favorite albums, the Modern Ruin. I, I just kept on playing it on repeat pretty much constantly. Yeah. And obviously, as soon as I realized I liked it, I explored their other albums. And Blossom at the time was definitely the one that stood out for me because that was just the music I was into back then. Because I'm a big fan of other stuff like metal and just stuff that has a lot of energy to it. And like little pump, yeah, exactly. It's like little pump, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, and uh, that is just how I got introduced to Frank Carter and uh, how I got introduced to Blossom, and and yeah, I was just looking at um, that uh that that vinyl that you got it does look very dope dude and also it's only for like 21 quid so you got a pretty damn good bargain there oh, and you, didn't you um well like you bought one of the deluxe editions was it of the the latest album yeah. and then wasn't it at a at a concert the last concert you went to you got like a limited very limited edition like yeah copy? yeah i i basically i picked up uh the deluxe pre-order like deluxe early bird edition of end of suffering their newest album which yeah. um because if you're on the uh the international death Cult website you'll be able to see the white vinyl edition that they got set up there mine is see-through yellow with blue specks across it so it's got like a blue paint splatter in the middle <laughs> but basically then at the most recent concert that i went to back in 2019 just before end of suffering came out officially um they were doing a promotional thing, I guess, there where you had yeah. to fulfill all the criteria. You had to have the early bird edition pre-ordered. You had to turn up to their concert and you had to buy merch at the concert. And if you did all of those, you got a one of 25 flexi disc. So only 25 people received the, uh, the flexi disc and I managed to get a uh, copy of it which yeah, is yeah. probably the rarest thing that I've got in my entire vinyl collection. I think I might have showed it to you, Tom, the, uh, yeah, like yeah. the thin white and gold. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I think it is the rarest thing that I've got. 
out of all of my collection because I think they only printed, as I said, 25 to 30 of them total. And the you can't really find them on any of their websites or anything. The yeah. only way you would have heard about it or found it is if you pre-ordered it, the, the full album, and turned up to one of their concerts. Yeah. So that's the only way you would have found out about the deal that they were doing with the Flexi Disc. It's very so, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing that I love about them as well, specifically, is the fact that because of their production and because it's all done independently, they can do some really, really cool stuff. Mm. With their merch with their vinyls. Oh yeah, with their distribution as well. Yeah, yeah, that's with their cool. distribution as well. Like they've got, um, they've got art books for each mm. of their, um, each of their um, albums, basically. Yeah. Um, that was also originally when Blossom first came out back in 2015. They were doing a similar super limited edition where rather than just getting you know a normal final with a normal cover and everything the cover art was hand painted by frank carter himself <laughs> damn hand painted and signed he painted like a hundred of them jesus it was like the special limited edition versions so That's cool yeah and each of them was slightly different he made each of them slightly different because yeah. i think there's pictures on his instagram of him he has this wall of the album covers and that and he's just going to each of them with the little colored paint just adding a little bit of yellow to the the, the flames on the front cover and stuff like that but um but yeah so they are probably one of the coolest bands that do some of the some of the most interesting stuff with their merch and their distribution they always have uh at least like two or three different editions for each vinyl release they do because now with blossoms they'll have the the original edition the limited hand painted edition then they got the blossom deluxe and the blossom deluxe super limited paint by numbers edition too so yeah they've got a very large selection of people of uh stuff basically yeah, yeah. so for anyone like me who's a, a bit of a collector of these kinds of stuff, it's definitely very appealing. So it's very cool. They kind of had like all of that kind of, uh, I mean, just releasing all these special editions of vinyls and the fact that they're still like doing it seems like it's very analog, uh, like giving out those like, that plexi disc, yeah, yeah, as well. Like, um, they, they seem to be a fan of the of analog music yeah yeah it's yeah. cool and i respect that a lot because i think the only other artist that i've seen this kind of dedication to analog music would be jack white i think he's the one only other artist that i know of that has a such a dedication to giving out physical things to mm. fans and stuff like that so because as i said along with having the vinyls they've got cds they've got cassettes they've got art books uh, yeah. They released a, a, a backpack for their most recent album with the, the album cover design over the top of it. Uh, they got all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. A lot for collectors. It's very cool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so. man. And I mean, also, besides that, it is also a top album. It's very, very. Exactly. Exactly. So, very, very good album. So, so you said that um, Frank Carter was in a lot of other bands. Were have the Rattlesnakes done anything without him? Uh, no, no. I am not a hundred percent sure about whether Dean has done anything because I'm sure he probably has got a history with um, other artists, but nothing that I fully know of. But none of the other people, I think, have done anything large like Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. Um, so I think the only real person who has a bit of a kind of track record of album sales would be Frank Carter himself, as we said with Gallows and uh, Pure Love. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, we were talking about. Um with his live shows and just looking at some of these photos of some of their live shows don't know when they were taken but they look absolutely nuts it's yeah. yeah it's it's it definitely seems like 
an experience going to one of their shows, man. Well, what else would you do to songs like Juggernaut? Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. You just go yeah. absolutely wild. There is a beautiful really death. You can do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, the as I was saying earlier, the live shows are an experience like it's unmatched with any other band. I think there's no other band that I've seen that uh, matches the kind of live shows they put on. And I think I've probably seen over a hundred different bands live now. Mm. So and none of them have gone up to that level of just absolute insanity that um, Frank Carter does. So, but yeah, because you'll just have, there was one show I saw him at where he climbed up onto the, um, the rigging, basically, the rigging that had all of the speakers um, hanging off of and it was over the crowd, so he was hanging over the crowd, and then he hooks his legs around it and hangs upside down about, like, I don't know, maybe like 15, 20 feet in the air above the crowd, then hangs down and sings the rest of the song upside down above the crowd, <laughs> basically. <laughs> hanging just by his feet, just on, these, uh, on the scaffolding of the stage. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, with Juggernaut, it's really kind of overwhelming just the sheer amount of sound that they have. It's yeah, not uh, expecting it. The first couple of no, <laughs> I didn't know what they expect. It really floored me. Yeah, <laughs> hits you like a brick. Yeah, you get a chance, and then you don't really get a chance to recover. And no, it's a uh, it's pretty unrelenting. Loss, really, it's yeah, it's unrelenting. That's what it is. But if you like that kind of stuff, if you like just kind of wild energy, unrelenting force. Mm. I think that's the main thing I'd say to anyone that was listening to this as well. Just be prepared. The <laughs> starts very strong. Yeah, exactly. You I wasn't quite very prepared. Strong. Very strong. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Breathing room until track six, where it slows down a bit. And then it goes yeah. back to kind of unrelenting force and momentum in the last couple of songs. And then mm-hmm. kind of ties off, as I said, with I Hate You. So, yeah. Well, um, okie dokie. So if you were going to, if you were going to, like, do your own backyard festival, Charlie. Yeah. Theoretically, hypothetically speaking, um, you would have Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes to perform many songs from this album. Oh Just... yeah, yeah. If, if, if I was a festival organizer, yeah, they would probably be one of my picks for headliners. I'd say. Damn. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And also, I guess Frank Carter could also like do it. He could set up a little tattoo stall as well. Yeah, as exactly. Play. Have like a sick little yeah. uh, pop. Tattoo sort of people want to come yeah. get tattooed by one of the artists. So, but that's cool, man. That's really cool. Um, okie dokie. Now, if you actually, it's pointless asking you to rate it, you'll give it a 10 out of 10. It's one of your greatest records. <laughs> exactly, uh, yeah. We're talking about yeah. favorite records, so of course it's going to be a 10 out of 10 for this. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I believe that rounds us up. And, um, you were right when you said 10 minutes in that we'd be going for another 30 minutes because we have been. <laughs> um, it's just flown by. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I believe that that brings us to a nice, nice little close. Uh, I've been Tim, joined here by uh, my ever, ever loving and supportive and uh, use, very useful co host who actually runs the show. I'm, I'm, I hate I'm, you. Yeah. I'm like a permanent guest. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and we've also been joined here by uh, Charlie. Thank you. So, uh, well, why don't we all say goodbye, boys, and then let, let's go play Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.